Let's talk about sleeping and dreaming. I got a question last week while on here about how to fall asleep. And what came to me in that moment was something I've actually not thought of before, but I made it sound like it was validated, <laughs> but it was really just coming from my own mind. But when it comes to sleep, the reason why we stay awake is because we're ruminating on the ego's preference of keeping the body safe. So we're ruminating on the things that impact our money. We're ruminating on the things that impact our relationships, our comfort. And that's all coming from the mind's preference to serve the body. When we sleep, we actually go into another state of being. We actually go into another phase of self. And that phase of self is bodiless. We, uh, we essentially become disembodied and our consciousness takes uh, a different phase of existence. And that is one that is in another dimension. So if you're having trouble sleeping, because you are going through the laundry list of items from your day to day, how your body feels, what things could be threats to your body, the way out of that is to go into your imagination. And when you go into your imagination, you start imagining things that aren't. When you actually have to create with your pineal gland. Your pineal gland is very active when you are in deep sleep. It's because it's taking the light that has been absorbed by your skin, your hair, and your eyes, the melanin in your skin, your hair, and your eyes, and then it's producing a tonic, which we call melatonin. So mela means dark or black. And so melanin is absorbing light. That's why it's black. And then it's through the hypothalamus, pituitary, and then into the pineal gland. It's then producing melatonin, which is then responsible for going through your body and recalibrating everything to the day's light. And while that is happening, you are experiencing that light as dreams. And we associate dreams as fake, and we associate imagination as fake as well. However, the consciousness, whether it's fake or not, doesn't actually matter because your consciousness is experiencing it as real. So if you have trouble sleeping because you're ruminating, the brain is active in in a part of your brain that is concerned with the body and we have to get it into dream state. We have to get it at least towards dream state. Why is my hair getting caught in this? And getting towards dream state will mean that you're not within the body. You are, you are out of phase. So it's really easy. You just imagine other things. And I mentioned that that was asked me last week and I rarely ever take naps and it's actually hard for me to fall asleep. So yesterday I was really frazzled but tired because I was on a plane all day and switched time zones and I got home and I knew it was like two o'clock. I knew if I didn't take a nap for 20 minutes that I would not be able to function for the rest of the day. But if I took a two hour nap, then I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. So I was like, all right, I need to take a 20 minute nap. I need to fall asleep really quickly. And I got in bed and when you're not really, like when you're hyper all day long and then you get in bed, it's really difficult to fall asleep. So I was like, I'm gonna put this to the test. And I just started imagining my future as I deserve it to be. And immediately I wake up 20 minutes later to my alarm. I didn't even remember falling asleep. Now, it could be because I was tired, yes, but before I did that, it was hard for me to sleep. So I had to do that because I remembered giving this advice. When I woke up, I thought of something else. When I first started meditating, and you guys, if anyone's had this experience, definitely let me know in the comments. When I first started meditating, the first, which I'm going to actually go over today if I don't get tangented by amazing comments and questions by you guys. But when I first started meditating, the very first 
technique that I use is called color entrainment. And color entrainment, the way that I was using it, I essentially imagine all the colors of the rainbow. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, and then eventually black, which is a combination of all the colors. And I'm gonna, once again, I'm gonna teach you guys how to do color entrain entrainment technique. Uh, but I've been doing it for over 20 years. Well, I only really did it for a few months and then I haven't really needed to do it, but I've been teaching it for over 20 years. What I noticed is that it was very difficult for me to imagine. And it might be difficult for a lot of people to imagine, which is why it would be difficult to fall asleep because you do not have a switch in your mind to go from waking life to dreaming life. And I remember that at 19 years old, finding it very difficult to do this technique because in this technique, you have to imagine colors. And so the way this technique works is you imagine the color red. So I laid down, so this was before I was comfortable enough to meditate sitting up, but because this technique didn't have a preference of laying down or sitting, I would lay down and no matter what, for at least two weeks, I would fall asleep before I would get to the actual meditation part. And what color entrainment technique is, is you imagine, so you start off with 30 seconds to a minute each color. So you would lay down, you would close your eyes, you would relax yourself, and then you would start imagining in your mind. So you would, you would, it would, it would be like an intense focus. And for me, it was very, very exhausting. At least I thought it was exhausting, but really it was me just falling asleep. So once you're relaxed, you would start imagining the color red. And it wouldn't just be imagining the color red. You would imagine everything that you could see as the color red. So you would imagine a red apple. You would imagine the details of the apple. You would bite into the apple and you would see red inside the apple. And then I would imagine a red car and I'd open the hood and there'd be a red engine and then... Uh, the red Kool-Aid man would come busting in and it would spill its red liquid all over the place and it would paint the entire landscape red and I would look down at the grass and the grass would be red. I'd look up at the sky and the sky would be red. And you would do that for 30 seconds. And if you guys want a, a deeper explanation, just go to my YouTube, Raw of Earth, and just look up, or just look up Color Entrainment Raw of Earth. I explain a, diff a couple different ways. So after red... 30 seconds to a minute of that you would then do orange and it was everything that you can imagine being orange and if you guys are familiar with my kriyas there is a lot of imagination techniques so i've learned that imagining things is a very good way to get into and other dimensions and eventually manifest but imagination in itself is an exercise that requires practice we all feel like we can imagine because we do it it happens to us but for us to take control of that is a different thing it's like when i own gyms everyone that came in the doors ran we all fundamentally knew how to do the act of running but the second that i start teach pe teaching people drills and exercises on exactly how to run, like how the foot hits the ground, what muscles you're activating or what fascia lines you're activating to, to run. So instead of propelling yourself forward by pushing, you actually fall forward and you pull up your heel to your butt and then relax your, your lower leg so that it swings forward and it lands right on essentially the midfoot or ball of the foot which is more like a spring and you would you would go through this technique called pose running once you actually have a technique a conscious focus on how to run that's something that you can practice for years and it's the same thing with imagination we can we can think that we're imagining without focusing on how to do it but then when we actually have techniques and practices around it you could you could be practicing for years or lifetimes on just one skill of imagination and then you start to bring your focus and your consciousness into imagining which then what 
it translates into bringing your consciousness and your focused energy into dreaming. And that's how lucid dreaming happens. And then we start to be able to consciously focus on other things outside of ourself and connecting with other things on, outside of ourself. And it all really just begins with working on our imagination. So back to color and treatment technique. You do 30 seconds to 60 seconds of each color and it's intense focus with your entire being. So you do red first, then orange, then yellow. And it's like everything is yellow. You look at the ground, green grass. You look at the dirt, green dirt. You look at the, the house to your left. It's a, or I'm saying green, yellow grass, yellow dirt. You look at the house to your left. It's yellow house. The windows are yellow. You look in the shades are yellow. You, you go into the room. It's a yellow bed with a yellow wall and you go in the kitchen and then there's yellow bananas everywhere and you even peel the bananas and there's yellow insides of bananas. You look up, but there's a yellow fan and you're just yellow, 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 everything. If you have experience with yellow things like maybe a yellow VW bus, you go outside and there's a yellow VW bus with a yellow steering wheel and yellow seats. And so red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. You do that with all the colors for 30 seconds to a minute each. And then after that, you're at the top of a stairway and there's 21 stairs and you are going to walk down those 21 stairs and every step. So by the time you're at this point, you're pretty well lucid. You, you've lost sensation of the physical body and you're completely in this imaginary realm that you've set up for yourself and there's there's no real awareness of the physical body you can bring your focus to your physical body but you're kind of in two places at once so you're at the top of the stairs you take 21 steps down and every step you feel yourself everything around you getting blacker and blacker and blacker and you step down 21 times when you get to the bottom you're in complete pitch blackness and then and and then from there with this complete pitch blackness you then see a door and that door can be made of anything wood crystal light ice and you walk in through the door and when you walk in through the door, that's a dream world. That's whatever you want it to be. You can be flying. You can be going through water world. You can be... I was always flying through mountaintops. And then you can do things in this world. So you can do things like if you want to let something go, you can, you can go into like a, a spring in the ground. And you can let what you're letting go like pour out of you like like darkness or or shadows coming out of you and then you can step out of the spring and let the earth close up around you or you can meet people and have conversations with historical figures you could draw people to you uh and i learned a lot during this and I need to say a disclaimer here that if your intention is to disrupt people or be disruptive or destructive in this world, it will certainly show up in your life. This is some crazy magical things. Borderline gray or black magic could be used here because you're essentially now in another realm and you do have access to other individuals simply by just thinking about them in this realm anyways if you guys want to know a little bit more about the full thing i think there are like 20 minute videos on my youtube so the purpose of me saying all of that is because when i first started doing that what i would notice what's up what i would notice is that once I started doing the color imaginations, instantaneously something would start happening. And I didn't understand it at first. But I was in school 
as well for psychology. So the reason why I even got into this technique is because psychology school was too boring and dull for me and not teaching me the things that I desired to learn when I went into the psychology school. I went to psychology thinking that I was going to learn the instruction manual of a human being. And really, I didn't learn anything like that in psychology. It was always just about like labeling illnesses and categorizing abnormal psychology. And, and even child psychology was just mechanically broken into pieces for us to understand all of the separate parts of a human, at least at the time, 20 years ago, what we thought of as separate parts. And we were just studying everything individually nothing about consciousness. It was all just, we're machines and sometimes we act certain ways because of certain events that happened in our life. Anyways, it was pretty dull for me, so I just went home and I started pirating my own stuff, including this technique, and I never stopped. Okay, so. What would happen, I had to catch my, my frame there because I'm looking out for traffic. What would happen was when I started this, this intense imagination, I would notice my eyes were doing, here, I can do it right now. So I'm imagining a red horse. Uh, I'm imagining a red horse. It, the long hair on the back, the way its legs look. So I didn't know what that was at first. And I even, this was, this was right as cell phones were like coming to be. I think I had, I don't even think I, I had a proper cell phone that had a camera. So this was before you could even videotape yourself doing this. So. I didn't really know what it was. I didn't even really know if I was actually doing it because, you know, I said that you start to lose awareness of the body. So I didn't really know if, if anything was actually happening on my face. But it definitely does because you guys just saw it. And why am I saying this? Because at the same time I was in psychology school, I was learning about the phases of sleep. And there's a phase that we call REM. And REM means rapid eye movement. And rapid eye movement is happening when you're dreaming. And you're dreaming when you're at or near deep sleep. And what's happening when you're dreaming, I already explained in the beginning of this video, is that melatonin is being produced and your pineal gland is active. And that has everything to do with light. And I'm saying all of this, this is a long-winded explanation of how to use your imagination to get you closer to a dreaming state so that you can start to fall asleep quicker. But, and also, I should say and, not but, and learn how to imagine, to actually focus on the image nation in a way that becomes something tangible for you. Tangible meaning you are aware, you have an ability and power to manipulate and control. Those are very strong words that I'm pre-biased to avoid usually. However, that is exactly what it means. We are exiting our ability to have any control if we choose to remain asleep at this. But if we choose to remain awake while we're sleeping, then we do have control and ability to manipulate what is going down in those realms. Now the question is, are we actually doing the controlling or is there something else 
that is motivating our desires to even practice this and somehow placing you in front of this message so that you have the skill to practice and you feel alignment to it which feels like desire because there's something else that's channeling through you at this time for you to focus on this because there's a reason for you to be aware of this other realm which in a way means that you're not controlling it <laughs> you're not manipulating it and there's some other source responsible for you desiring to do so. Okay. Any questions on that? That was about a half hour of how to lucid dream and how to use imagination to fall asleep. Okay, so I fall asleep right away, but wake up and then have a tough time falling back again to sleep. I don't believe we are dreaming. We leave our bodies and have nocturnal experiences. Our bodies travel to different dimensions. That's exactly what I... I would concur, except for... I would say that our body is a subject of this reality and our body stays here. And that what we think our mind is, is really just a register, a memory, so to speak, of sensations that our body is experiencing. And our consciousness is much more than that. Our consciousness is flowing through us the mind is a filter that processes the consciousness. And when we dream, we're no longer in the body. We're no longer amongst the filter of the mind body. And it is our consciousness, it is our greater self, our source, that we are actually inhabiting in another dimension when we are sleeping. That would be my interpretation of it and thank you for the comments because our body very well and this is weird because we have to speak at different levels here right because our body may as well not even be real to begin with right like we're creating our consciousness is creating this physical experience and so if our consciousness isn't in our body does our body even exist here that's where like if there's Nobody to hear a tree fall in the forest doesn't make a sound. And my answer to that is, of course, it doesn't make a sound because sound is an interpretation of something that has an ear. And if there's no ears witnessing the tree falling, then the tree doesn't make a sound. So kind of seeing both sides of the uh, coin here. What to dream also. We'll try tonight. What to dream also. Yes. So the easiest thing to dream is to think about your greatest expression of self. And wherever you are now, what is, what is greater? And it's not that that's the, like, the goal. But it's just a good experience because you could also dream about what is not greater, right? You could also, I've done many meditative practices where I've imagined being tortured. I've imagined people that I really, really care about being tortured in front of me. And the reason why I would do that was other practices like the practice of detachment or dream of dying or take myself to the times in my life where I thought I was going to die and really just go deep into that and see, you know, be an observer on how that is witnessed within self, within the meditation or practice how I would handle that. So 
it's not always about the greatest expression of self. I'm just saying that's like the the easier one of the easier practices you can you can meditate on Jesus hair thing, man. You guys, I could list off the top of my head right now <laughs> a whole bunch of reasons why having hair is inconvenient. It really starts getting massively inconvenient when it gets below your waist because then you start sitting on it and that causes a bunch of problems and then also you it gets caught in things like doors or yeah especially doors and windows that get opened and closed and it starts to just fly further away from your body and get caught in like everything like plants and people walking by you and come on solar and apparently my own eyeballs who out there has had experience with lucid dreaming this is a question for you guys and what is your practice is it something that happens automatically or is it something that has been set as an intention by you and if you could just explain in the comments for everybody watching right now just to add some value besides my own personal experience I will dream of having great hair like you yes so that's a good example of of imagining something that isn't now that gets us out of our body gets us out of our ruminating thoughts about the way somebody looked at us today or worrying about something that we have to do on Friday if we just start imagining what it would be like to have hair down to your knees not my hair is almost to my knees but not quite there but if you start imagining that and you're living that you're out of this world you're out of this body and it forces your imagination to associate and align more with it forces your consciousness to align more with imagination as opposed to this physical body. Did I explain color entrainment technique the best? Someone saying I used to fly in my dreams, read a book about how to do it, and was able to have a few lucid dreams. It's been a while. So there is a book it's, that I read half of just because I wasn't in the place to practice what was in the book but that book was called so the color entrainment technique is something cool that you, you guys could consume of 20 minute video or just based on what I just told you already today in this live you could just do that in 20 to 30 minutes and essentially be lucid and then there's another book called dream yoga and that book's cool because, and there's another book called Reality Transurfing. And there's another book that I've read. Oh no! I think I lost the audio, so you guys let me know when I'm back. I was just listing off books that could be helpful on this. Dream of being a part of a movement in the 1800s. Okay, is my sound back? Is my sound back? Sound check, sound check. I'm just going to wait. Just going to wait. I'm actually going to put it in the chat. Is my sound back? All right. All right, yes. So another book is Robert Monroe wrote a couple books I forget the name of his book, so, but that was about all the different realms that he was experiencing. Robert Monroe is the person who, if you guys have heard about the CIA documents on, what was it called? It was about the holographic universe, but it was the something process. The ha I want to say halfway, but that wasn't it. It was the... Anyways, it was about astral projection. And Robert Monroe was one of the people 
well, he was, I think, the person in the CIA documents who was providing the CIA information on how to do that. You can easily download that CIA document, but he also wrote a book where he, he breaks down what the different realms are that he travels to. And there's different realms, and he's categorized the different beings in the different realms and what the purposes of the different realms are. And that's really interesting. But I would, so back to dream yoga. Dream yoga, dream yoga starts giving you practices. So once you, be, you learn to become lucid, then you actually start doing practices while you're dreaming. So it's no longer like, oh, let's go like fly and, and do all this stuff that we can't do in real life. The thing is, in these lucid states, the, the how can I say this? My experience is the more practiced you become, the less your cravings of the body follow you into these states and so what we think we would do if we had ultimate control of everything changes when we actually realize that we do and then that also starts to bleed over into your regular waking life because you are practicing being a creator and creators act differently than slaves or victims you know victims are always reaching for more they're fighting for what they don't have they're striving for what they don't have. Creators know that they have everything that they have because they created it. And if they want something, if they desire something else, then it shall be. And so there's a different whole mindset that you begin to appreciate when you embody the sense of lucid dreaming. And I'm saying that because in the book Dream Yoga, you actually start doing practices. And I remember one of the first practices was get lucid, and once you're there, start meditating on symbols. And there's another book called, I think it's just called The Oversoul, and that's from the Seth Speak series. And that's a fiction, quote, fiction book meant to educate the audience on what it would be like to be an oversoul and an oversoul is a soul that is inhabited by multiple bodies on potentially different planets different timelines and or the same planet in the same reality and a lot of there's a lot of similarities because a lot of this stuff has to do with symbols and symbols I don't fully understand, but if you think about from a universal standpoint, something like an English word is a very limiting concept. It's just the sound that we then translated into a meaning. It's not actually the meaning itself. It's like the word stick doesn't really have the energetic signature of a stick but a symbol has a lot more potential to represent the actual meaning of a thing and when you actually start talking about things in multiple dimensions a symbol would likely be more easily translated through dimensions especially when you imagine shapes and symbols as traveling. Like whales and dolphins, they project symbols essentially out of their, their, their vibrational capacity. That's how, they, that's how they speak to each other communicate that's how they communicate to each other they blast frequency we hear that as sound but it's really a tunnel it's a cylinder of frequency and the speed and the shape of that frequency has meaning that is way more dense than our language they can communicate at a far better capacity than we have to communicate just like when you think about dogs have a better sense of smell than us 
Look how long their nose is. Dogs actually smell in more dimensions than we smell. We just smell. Dogs can actually smell the past and the future. Well, the past. They can smell the past. So they can actually do a time assessment on when a certain smell existed at a certain space. They can even, if you walked across the street and then a dog walked across the street an hour later, the dog can tell which direction you walked based on the amount of particles. This is our understanding of it now. There might be something else happening, but based on the amount of particles that are on one side of the street versus the other, there would be more particles on the side of the street that you were last at than there is on the side of the street. By, I think it's written by James Nestor, deep. He's the same person that wrote Breathe. But it's fascinating. There's been a lot of studies on dolphins that had to be stopped because they're... Well, you'll learn about it in the book. The way that the extraterrestrials communicate is in cylindrical formations that have meaning that is far more advanced than our words. So it's just a way to open up to the fact that there's more to awareness than we are aware of. And that's the whole beauty of life is that we don't quit learning when we get out of school like guys school is just for most of us it's an initiation it's teaching you know it's it's like climbing up the mountain and struggling for us to realize that there's more there's more and we get to you know we climb up the mountain for two weeks to see the guru that's at the top of the mountain and hasn't eaten in 60 years and he tells us one little secret to life and we we do all of that for that one little secret and the secret is something that we could have discovered on our own but because we went through the process of struggle to get that message we take it to heart and we actually incorporate it that's what i see modern life as is it's like an initiation school where we're going through all of this crap is what comes to mind we're going through all of this mountain climbing for us to recognize the lessons that reveal themselves within the climb (laughs) and it's it's there for us and the invitation is for us to always be open to learning and definitely one of the things that gets taught to us in school is that we're the epitome of evolution and we're the epitome of greatness especially when it comes to technology and western culture and i was definitely taught that america was the the greatest country on earth and everybody wants to be like us And it's very limiting when you think that there's no more. And when you look back in history, physics, teachers, all cultures, all thought the same thing. That they were the end. They were the all. They were God's gift to reality. And all evolution is going to stop with them. And that ultimately is the reason for the demise of all of them is because there's a refusal to there's an attachment to the current state of being and with that said I would just like to invite you all to go to bed tonight wildly (coughs) and creatively focusing on your imagination as opposed to the egoic ruminating thoughts of the body because when you're ruminating on the desires and the intentions and the wants of the body then you're going to be in this physical realm you're going to be awake in the body and the idea is to be awake in the dream world in the image nation 
And so prompt that, practice doing that before you go to sleep, and that will get you one step closer to being lucid and being able to choose the dream realities, which then gets you one step closer to being able to choose the physical realities of your alignment.